Federal officials are holding a new technical briefing on the new COVID-19 vaccines for the fall. Let's listen in to the Health Canada officials. Thank you. Merci. Uh, good morning. Thank you for joining us today. Before I begin, I'd just like to acknowledge that Canada is the homeland of First Nations, Inuit and Métis people, and that we are gathering in Ottawa on the unceded traditional territory of the Algonquin and Anishinaabe people. Today I'm, here, today I'm here to talk to you about Health Canada's authorization of the new Moderna Spike Max COVID-19 vaccine targeting the Omicron XBB 1.5 subvariant. We have authorized this vaccine for people six months of age and older. The vaccine was authorized after an independent and thorough scientific review for safety, efficacy and quality. And this included a review of data from several studies of the primary series and booster doses of the Spikevax vaccine collected over the past two years. After assessing all the data, we've concluded that there is strong evidence showing that the benefits of this vaccine outweigh the potential risks. Individuals who are five years of age and older should receive one dose of the vaccine, regardless of the COVID-19 vaccination history. And children between six months and four years of age should receive two doses if they have not previously been vaccinated with the COVID-19 vaccine. And if they have been previously vaccinated with one or more doses, they should receive a single dose. This vaccine is anticipated to provide a robust immune response that will be effective against the Omicron XBB.1.15 variant. Health Canada is also actively reviewing submissions from Pfizer, BioNTech and Novavax seeking authorization of the respective XBB 1.5 COVID-19 vaccines. These submissions are being reviewed on a priority basis by dedicated scientific teams. Timing for the completion of these reviews depends on many factors. We will make decisions once we have thoroughly evaluated all of the required information. Health Canada continues to use rigorous and independent scientific processes to ensure all health products meet our stringent requirements for safety, efficacy and quality before allowing them on the market. And as with all of Health Canada's vaccine and drug authorizations, we want to stress that we only examine the most robust scientific evidence from trusted and reliable sources. We recognize that there's an abundance of information available that's sometimes false and exaggerated. We encourage people to consider their sources of information very carefully. As we did with all our COVID-19 vaccines, we're publishing a number of documents about this decision, including the Canadian product monograph and the regulatory decision summary, which provides a high level summary of the evidence that we reviewed. All of this information is available on the Government of Canada's main COVID-19 website. Health Canada and the Public Health Agency of Canada will monitor for any adverse events in collaboration with the provinces and territories, international partners and manufacturers. As with all vaccines, we will take action if any new safety issues are identified. Today's authorization provides people in Canada with more protection against COVID-19. I know we all wish COVID-19 no longer existed, but people are still getting infected and vaccination continues to be one of the most effective ways to protect ourselves against serious outcomes, including severe illness, hospitalization and death. Vaccine protection decreases over time which means many of us are due for another dose. Receiving a shot of the new formulation will help protect people against the variants circulating currently and expected to circulate through the fall and winter. Thank you. Merci. Miigwech. <coughs> Bonjour. Merci de vous joindre à nous aujourd'hui. Thank you for joining us today. Before I begin, I would like to acknowledge that Canada is the homeland of First Nations, Inuit and Métis people, and that we are gathering in Ottawa on the unceded traditional territory of the Algonquin Anishinaabe people. Today I'm here to talk to you about Health Canada's authorization of the new Moderna Spikevax COVID-19 vaccine targeting the Omicron XBB. 1.5 subvariant. We have authorized this vaccine for six people six months of age and older. The vaccine was authorized after an independent and thorough scientific review for safety, efficacy and quality. This included a review of data from several studies of the primary series and booster doses of the Spikevax vaccine collected over the past two years. 
After assessing all the data, we have concluded that there is strong evidence showing that the benefits of this vaccine outweigh the potential risks. Individuals who are five years of age and older should receive one dose of the vaccine regardless of their COVID-19 vaccination history. Children between six months and four years of age should receive two doses if they have not previously been vaccinated with a COVID-19 vaccine. If they have been previously vaccinated with one or more doses, they should receive a single dose. This vaccine is anticipated to provide a robust immune response that will be effective against the Omicron XBB15 variant. Health Canada is also actively reviewing submissions from Pfizer, BioNTech, and Novavax seeking authorization of their respective XBB15 COVID-19 vaccines. These submissions are being reviewed on a priority basis by dedicated scientific teams. Timing for the completion of the re these reviews depends on many factors. We will make decisions once we have thoroughly evaluated evaluated all of the required information. Health Canada continues to use a rigorous and independent scientific process to ensure all health products meet our stringent requirements for safety, efficacy and quality before allowing them on the market. As with all of Health Canada's vaccine and drug authorizations, we want to stress that we only examine the most robust scientific evidence from trusted and reliable sources. We recognize that there is an abundance of information available, that it is sometimes false and exaggerated. We encourage people to consider their sources of information carefully. As we did with all of our other COVID-19 vaccines, we are publishing a number of documents about this decision, including the Canadian product monograph and the regulatory decision summary, which provides a high-level summary of the evidence that we reviewed. All of this information is available on the Government of Canada's main COVID-19 website. Health Canada and the Public Health Agency of Canada will monitor for any adverse events, and this in collaboration with the provinces and territories, international partners and the manufacturer. As with all vaccines, we will take action if any new safety issues are identified. Today's authorization provides people in Canada with more protection against COVID-19. I know we all wish COVID-19 no longer existed, but people are still getting infected. And vaccination continues to be one of the most effective ways to protect ourselves against serious outcomes, including severe illness, hospitalization and death. Vaccine protection decreases over time, which means many of us are due for another dose. Receiving a shot of the new formulation will help protect people against the variants circulating currently and expected to circulate through the fall and winter. Thank you. Bonjour à toutes et tous. Today, Hello everyone. I had an update from the National Advisory Committee on Immunization, or NACI, on the use of COVID-19 vaccines this fall and an overview of our expectations for the upcoming respiratory virus season. With today's authorization, NACI is reaffirming its guidance on the use of COVID-19 vaccines this fall. NACI recommends authorized age groups get an updated COVID-19 vaccine dose this fall, six months after the last vaccine dose or infection. Provinces and territories will be providing additional information on COVID-19 and seasonal flu vaccine availability in their respective regions. We will have enough supply of the updated COVID-19 vaccines to support immunization programs across Canada. From the start of 2023, COVID-19 indicators had been on a decline to historically low levels for a number of months. In the last few weeks, we have started to see an increase in COVID-19 indicators across many areas of the country, including hospitalizations. The Omicron variant continues to evolve with XBB subvariants such as EG.5, continuing to circulate in Canada and globally. Canada has also reported 11 cases of the Omicron subvariant BA.2.86. Here's some good news. Preliminary clinical data have shown promising immune responses from the XBB.1.5 vaccine, the vaccine receiving regulatory authorization today, against various Omicron sublineages, including EG.5 and BA.2.86. 
This improved immune response is expected to better protect against the strains that are circulating in our communities. If, ha if ha it has been more than six months since your last dose of COVID-19 vaccine or your last infection, your protection from the virus may have waned. Receiving a COVID-19 vaccine dose this fall with an updated formulation is expected to increase individual protection against infection, symptoms, and severe disease. This is particularly important for people at increased risk of severe outcomes, such as people 65 years and older, individuals with underlying medical conditions, pregnant people, and those living or working in congregate living settings. Vaccination in combination with personal protective measures are integral tools to reduce the negative impact of respiratory illnesses. This is especially important as we head into the colder months when people spend more time indoors and the risk of respiratory illness increases. Last year, Canada experienced an early and intense influenza season during a time of high circulation of the respiratory syncytial virus or RSV putting increased strain on already stressed healthcare systems, particularly the pediatric healthcare system. It is difficult to predict what will happen this fall and winter regarding the co-circulation of influenza, RSV, and COVID-19, given that it is still early in the season. But the good news is we can get prepared and protect ourselves in case simultaneous surges of respiratory viruses occur. This is why receiving a COVID-19 vaccine dose, as well as a flu shot this fall, is especially important. It is safe to receive COVID-19 and flu vaccines at the same time. These vaccines will help to keep us from getting seriously ill and by extension, reduce the burden on our health systems. Treatments can also help to reduce serious illness posed by COVID-19. The Government of Canada is funding Can Treat COVID, a clinical trial with sites across Canada to evaluate treatments like Paxlovid for acute COVID-19 infection. You can find out more, more information at cancovid, no, sorry, cantreatcovid.org. Everyday personal protective measures such as staying home when sick, cleaning your hands frequently, properly wearing a well-fitting mask or respirator, and improving ventilation as possible remain effective strategies to reduce the spread of respiratory viruses, especially when combined with vaccination. With children now back in school, check to make sure their routine vaccines are up to date for their age. Immunization remains the number one action we can take to protect children from serious infectious diseases. For older adults, it's important to remember that during the fall and winter months, people over the age of 65 are at greater risk for other infections too, like bacterial pneumonia. So if you're in this age group, now is also a good time to discuss getting the pneumococcal vaccine with your healthcare provider. With these tools in mind, I encourage everyone to take action to stay safe this respiratory virus season. Merci. Thank you, Miigwech. Bonjour à toutes et à tous. Hello, everyone. Today, I will provide an update from the National Advisory Committee on Immunization, or the NACI, on the use of COVID-19 vaccines this fall and an overview of our expectations for the upcoming respiratory virus season. With today's authorization, the NACI is reaffirming its guidance on the use of COVID-19 vaccines this fall. NACI recommends authorized age groups get an updated COVID-19 vaccine dose this fall, six months after their last vaccine dose or infection. Provinces and territories will be providing additional information on COVID-19 and seasonal flu vaccine availability in their respective regions. We will have enough supply of the updated COVID-19 vaccines to support immunization programs across Canada. 
From the start of 2023, COVID-19 indicators have been on a decline to historically low levels for a number of months. In the last few weeks, we have started to see an increase in COVID-19 indicators across many areas of the country, including hospitalizations. The Omicron variant continues to evolve, with XBB subvariants such as EG.5 continuing to circulate in Canada and globally. Canada has reported 11 cases of Omicron subvariant BA.2.86. Preliminary clinical data have shown promising immune responses from the XBB.1.5 vaccine, the vaccine receiving authorization today against various sub-lineages, including EG.5 and BA.2.86. This improved immune, immune response is expected to better protect against the strains that we are seeing circulating in our communities. If it has been more than six months since your last dose of COVID-19 vaccine or your last infection, your protection from the virus may have waned. Receiving a COVID-19 vaccine dose this fall with an updated formulation is expected to increase individual protection against infection, symptoms and severe disease from COVID-19. This is particularly important for people at increased risk of severe COVID-19 illness, such as people 65 years and older, individuals with underlying medical conditions, pregnant people, and those living or working in congregate living settings. Vaccination in combination with personal protective measures are integral tools to reduce the negative impacts of respiratory illness. This is especially important as we head into the colder months when people spend more time indoors and the risk of respiratory illness increases. Last year, Canada experienced an early and intense influenza season during a time of high circulation of RSV, putting increased strain on already stressed health care systems, particularly the pediatric health care system. It is difficult to predict what will happen this fall and winter regarding the co-circulation of influenza, RSV, and COVID-19, given that given rather that it is still still early in the season. But the good news is we can get prepared and protect ourselves in case of simultaneous surges of respiratory viruses occur. That's why receiving a COVID-19 vaccine dose as well as a flu shot this fall is especially important. It is safe to receive the COVID-19 and flu vaccines at the same time. These vaccines will help keep us from getting seriously ill and, by extension, reduce the burden on our healthcare systems. Treatments can also help to reduce serious illness posed by COVID-19. The Government of Canada is funding Can Treat COVID, a clinical trial with sites across Canada to evaluate treatments like Paxlovid for acute COVID-19 infection. You can find more information at cantreatcovid.org. Everyday personal protective measures such as staying home when sick, cleaning your hands frequently, properly, wearing a well-fitting mask or respirator, and improving ventilation as much as possible remain effective strategies to reduce the spread of respiratory viruses, especially when combined with vaccination. With children now back in school, check to make sure their routine vaccines are up to date for their age. Immunization remains the number one action we can take to protect children from serious infectious diseases. For older adults, it's important to remember that during the fall and winter months, people over the age of 65 are at greater risk of other infections too, like bacterial pneumonia. So if you're in this age group, now is a good time to discuss getting the pneumococcal vaccine with your health care provider. With these tools in mind, I encourage everyone to take action to stay safe this respiratory virus season.
Merci. Okay, we've been listening in live in Ottawa as Health Canada officials talk about the uh, new Moderna vaccine uh, to treat COVID-19 is being approved there, talking about the protection it offers, also talking about re-recommend, you know, recommendations for people in terms of uh, getting another shot, perhaps kids over five, they say should get one regardless of their status, and adults as well also recommending that along with a flu shot, all in the hopes of getting a better protection, better immune response.